when they get into Islam, they find there's a lot of things they don't really like about it. And then, of course, most people born into Islam don't know there's anything else. And they're like anybody born into any cult, whether it's Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or any other kind of cult, they're, they're really indoctrinated not to even give it a chance, not to even hear it. But what the pastors told me was there was a Muslim, lot of Muslims who seemed interested in Christianity, but they won't go inside of a, a Christian church building because uh, that that's a, a death sentence for them. They can be killed for that. Any, anyone can then accuse them of having been converted. So I talked to them about the way we converted Muslims uh, overseas in in. In, the, in uh, Asia and in the Philippines and elsewhere and how we brought them in uh, those who, who were seeking to become uh, Christians we would bring them into house churches because they can come into your house or you can meet in their house but they cannot go into a church building that's a death sentence for them and uh, and and how we uh, how we trained in the Philippines we train, trained what we called Bible believing Muslims in other words they were Muslims in far as culture went, but they had left the Muslim faith, and they were meeting in house churches, studying the Bible, and they were Christians in every way. In fact, many of them much more devout than uh, other Christians because you don't play around at being a Christian when there's persecution involved. Uh, when it can cost you your life, nobody just plays at being a Christian. They're either very serious about it or they won't have anything to do with it. And, of course, a lot of them are... Uh, in a very dangerous situation as a Muslim, studying the Bible, following Jesus, being baptized as a Christian and serving him. But what they don't do is they don't go and do anything alarming that will get them purposely killed, like suddenly start eating um, foods that Muslims don't eat or changing the way they dress. But what they do is when they go to the mosque, they use it as a way to evangelize those that they call true seekers. And uh, then the idea is to take them away and to disciple them, and when they can trust them, to bring them into the house churches and bring them to faith and baptize them so that they don't end up getting killed. And by the way, by the way through this, there's a, huge, um, there's a huge revival in Christianity growing like crazy in Iran um, and for one country and in several other countries in the Middle East, but it's underground. Because if it's, if it's in the open, it's a death sentence right there. But it's moving and changing a lot of people's hearts, especially the way ISA and the terrorists and, and Muslim Brotherhood have been acting. A lot of Muslims are beginning to have some second thoughts about Islam. When they see it played out uh, in reality, it's, it's very shocking and offensive to them as well. So there are underground uh, revivals like this going on in uh, in many places in the Middle East and other Muslim countries, even in the, the Philippines. I was the city we lived in. There was Muslim believing, uh, Bible believing Christians or, or Muslims. I mean, or Christian Muslims. Um, try to, I'm trying to say it in a way that the listener can hear. Outwardly, they still got their beard, or they're still, in the case of Filipinos, they're still trying to grow a beard, and they're still dressing like a Muslim. <laughs> they maintain their Muslim friends, and they they do the out the Muslim things, but they are no longer worshippers of this evil moon god Allah, but they worship. Uh, um, they worship Jesus Christ, and they worship God the Father, and they recognize He's the Son. They've been baptized, but they're, they're, they see themselves as covert Christians working to bring the kingdom of God to other Muslims. So when I talked to them about this, they got very excited, and I brought along a couple of brochures that we use for teaching people about house church in the United States and, and a couple of books, and they got very excited about the possibility of being able to disciple these people these people who are interested in leaving Islam, but they're not willing, uh, they're not willing at least at this point of, of risking their life to do it. And, and, um, and so it gives them another way to be able to disciple Muslims and bring them out of Islam and to create these Bible believing Christ, uh, Muslims who are Christians in every way except the culture. And this is one thing we have to remember as Americans. We live in an in a American culture. This is not a Christian culture by any means. If you think that, you haven't been watching TV or the news in the last 50 years. Uh, it's not a Christian culture at all. It's a materialistic, humanistic uh, culture that we call America. It's not Christian. But even, even if you want to go back earlier than that, uh, many of the things that, that we did and do are not Christian. They're, they are extra biblical, as are church buildings themselves. You read your Bible. There were no church buildings. 
in the Bible. They met in homes, and they and uh, in Priscilla and Aquila's homes, or Philemon's home, or or Lydia's house church, or John Mark's mother's house church in Jerusalem, and places like that. So. Um, there's a lot of things that we do we think is Christian culture. It's not Christian culture at all. It's American culture. It's a replant of German, Dutch, uh, English, and Swiss culture, and, uh, and, and, and Scottish and English culture into our country. And so we have a tendency to think that Protestant Christianity is true Christianity, but really Christianity is beyond denominational things, and it, and it thrives in a lot of different cultures. If we give it a, a chance, but if if they have to become an American, if they have to go to a British style church building, you're not going to get many converts because they don't want to walk outside and be killed. They don't want to be seen by another Muslim and end up being killed over it. And and you have to remember that people come to faith slowly. It's not a, normally an instant process as we like to believe in America. First, they begin to seek, and they're uncomfortable, and they begin to learn about the things of God. And, uh, and then, then they are discipled, and they're led, and, and they're converted, and they, be, and they grow as disciples. But this happens in different cultures. So they were very excited about that, and so I'm, I'm excited to get more materials to them there and to help uh, teach them on how to follow up on that and pursue that. And 